That sounds great. Um, Bridget, if you just give me a thumbs up that my audio is coming out okay, that's awesome. And I can start screen sharing in a second. But thank you so much for having me. Um, one of my favorite parts of my job as an admissions counselor at the University of Arizona is getting to do these opportunities and share a little bit um, about our school. Um, there are so many great schools in the U.S. and all over the world that have a lot of different opportunities, and you never really know which one has the perfect fit for you. So I'm going to walk through some general information, and I'm really glad we have that Q&A section at the end of this. So if someone has a question about a really specific major or tuition program or whatever, I should be able to answer that. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, we're almost there and we should be good to go. Um, so the University of Arizona, we always like to start our presentations with our access statement. So we want you to exist in the ways that are most comfortable for you. So if you need to, you know, in this context with virtual, it may not be standing up, sitting down, laying down, stretch, whatever. Um, that's totally okay. Um, everyone exists in spaces in different ways. Um, and how someone can best engage and listen might look different than how you do. Please, once again, this is why I love the Q&A. Let me know if I need to slow down or repeat any information during this discussion. Um, I also, you know, I'm going to have my email up at the end of this, and I'm happy to help with any more specific questions. Also, um, we also do our land grant acknowledgement. We respectfully acknowledge that the University of Arizona is on the land and territories of Indigenous peoples. Today, Arizona is home to 22 federally recognized tribes. It's Tucson specifically being home to the offerings, partnerships, and community service. All right, so let's get into it. Um, the first question I get when I do these events is, where are you? Well, obviously we are in the state of Arizona, so we are in the Southwest, and I know we have people zooming in from all over here. Um, I am our Southern California regional recruiter, so I am based in the city of Los Angeles. Um, I uh, go to campus about once a month with this position. Um, it's usually about an hour and a half flight for me. Um, airport is super easy to get to. Um, it's about 15 minutes from campus, so it's overall pretty accessible. At the University of Arizona, we have about 49,000 total students. So when Bridget was introducing that we are a large school, we definitely are a large public university. Um, of those roughly 50,000 students, about 39,000 are undergrad students and 10,000 are graduate students. So we do have a lot of graduate programs, whether you're looking at medicine, business, anything kind of STEM related, um, but most of our students do tend to be undergrads. Um, even though we have that huge number, um, we're also able to offer pretty great class sizes for a university this big. We have a 17 to 1 student to faculty ratio, as well as an average class size of 25 to 35 students. I just got an email last week that that number has actually decreased since last year. Um, so our class size is going down, um, which means the university is investing um, to make sure that we have trained great faculty to kind of make sure you're getting that individualized education plan that you're paying for. Um, additionally, we did just welcome our largest freshman class ever. I believe we did that two years in a row. So we're still a growing university. Um, it's exciting to be a part of a growing university and a university that has an awesome reputation. Even though that is a lot of students, our campus itself is located on a one square mile grid. Um, even though Tucson is the second largest city in the state of Arizona, um, it's not really overwhelming. I think in California, it would be like the 22nd largest city. So it's not somewhere that's, you know, easy to get lost in. I really like it kind of as a place to go to college because campus itself, everything's 15 minutes walking distance. Um, but then in the greater Tucson area, you have great public transportation. You have an airport, you know, you get a little bit of everything else. Um, at the University of Arizona, we have over 300 degrees. So while I'm talking, if you just typed in that arizona.edu slash degree search, you should be able to go through some of our options, specifically for undergrads looking for that four-year degree. 
Um, we do have about 154 year degree options. The other ones are mostly graduate programs. We do have some associates programs as well as online programs. But if you're looking to be a freshman on our main campus, um, those 150 apply for you. We have 20 different academic colleges at the University of Arizona. A lot of them are listed right there. Um, so our A Center is where our undecided students go. So about uh, our second most popular major for incoming freshmen last year was undecided. Um, the rest of the top five, the rest of the top 10 really are all business and engineering. So our Eller, you can see it right there, E-L-L-E-R, College of Business Management, um, is where you're going to be going for our business programs. Um, it was one of the you know, top public business schools in the country last year. Um, there's about 14 different majors, I believe, within the Eller College of Management. So if you're looking to do finance, accounting, entrepreneurship, business management, business marketing, those are all phenomenal programs. Their website also has a lot of great resources. If you want to explore what the difference between some of those degrees are, they can tell you where their graduates are going to work. They can tell you roughly what their graduates are making these days. So the Our College of Management is our largest academic college, and it's probably one of the things we're most known for. Our second largest academic college um, is our College of Engineering. Um, so this is another really strong program. Um, within Arizona, we do spend the most on research, so we are a big research institution, as the following slides are going to talk a little bit about. So anything engineering or medicine typically does really well for us. Um, we have a pretty large hosting of engineering programs, ranging from mechanical engineering, aerospace, biomedical, environmental, there's a lot of great programs. I think there's 16 specific majors within that college for you to check out. I'm not gonna go through all 20 of our academic colleges one by one, just because we'd be here all night slash afternoon, depending on where you are, but some other cool programs that I like to highlight because not all schools have uh, these programs. Um, we do have an undergraduate college of law. So if you're looking to go to law school, um, this program is designed specifically to set you up for that. We were one of the first six public schools in the country to have an undergraduate college of law. So that's a really strong program. Other things that most colleges don't have, we have a great college of architecture. So there are five different majors you can do within that. Um, we have a college of nursing as well to get into our pre-nursing program. It is one of our most competitive programs. Um, and I can talk a little bit about some of those GPA requirements as you move on. Um, once again, at the end, we can talk through some specific majors. Our website is really helpful for most majors. You can view like where these people are working. You can view what the four-year course plan looks like. Um, and there's a lot of good ones. And I'll make sure I also talk a little bit about our honors college as we get towards the end of the presentation. Cool. Um, so uh, just the, these are kind of our bragging slides. We were a top 10 public in the West last year. We also were rated one of the best colleges by the Princeton Review. A lot of this comes from the fact that we are a huge research institution. Um, in addition to spending the most in the state of Arizona on research, we are a member of the Association of American Universities, which is around 60 of the top research universities in the US. Um, we're also tier one. We have a lot of cool partnerships with not just like the Department of Defense, and we have co-ops with Raytheon and Boeing and Honeywell and all these brand name great companies um, to get some work experience at. Um, we also have some really exclusive elite programs. We get the fourth most money from NASA of any university in the country. So um, those research opportunities really do kind of trickle down throughout the whole school. You may be thinking like, oh, it's cool that they have NASA, but I'm studying marketing or something. Um, a good example of this is we had a big project with NASA, OSIRIS-REx, where not to get too into it, I just like space. We sent a probe out into space to get a sample from an asteroid. And you may be like, yeah, that doesn't seem like anything that a business student would be involved in but they helped with some of the PR work for that. Even a student in our College of Fine Arts 
a sophomore, a 19 year old got to design the logo patch for that mission. So those opportunities really do apply to the whole school. And if you look into a specific major, that is where they're gonna be able to talk a lot about some of those programs specifically. Cool. Um, also generate the University of Arizona does have some great study abroad programs. So we have over a hundred study abroad programs in 60 plus countries. What I like about Arizona is they are pretty flexible when it comes to study abroad. So not all students are going to have that perfect time to take a full semester off. Um, we accommodate that there are winter programs, there are summer programs. Our honors students even end up doing a, can do a study abroad program before their freshman year starts. So having that flexibility is something that's great about the University of Arizona. We always strive to be a, strive to be a truly um, global university. We have students from all over the world and we're sending students back out into the world. So those are great programs. They vary beyond just the language ones you might've heard about. We have research opportunities at foreign universities. We have internship opportunities at countries and companies all over the world. So that's something I get really excited about because I got to do some study abroad in Morocco and in Spain, um, and it was awesome. Cool, um, getting a little cut off at the bottom, but our student success district um, is one of the things we like to highlight during these presentations, I got to do a tour of this new facility this summer. Um, so this is just kind of a transition into talking about some of the way that we set our students up for success. Um, so this specific building centralizes career tutoring, wellness and advising resources, literally floor by floor. There's 3D printers, there's cameras you can rent, there's iPads you can rent, there's a gym if you needed to go work out in the middle of a study session. There's our tutoring centers, our think tanks, all of them kind of lie in this new building. Um, this is just a big part of the university always trying to invest um, in these ideas of student support. Um, within the country, we are actually known for how we're supporting our students, um, specifically with learning differences. Um, our SALT Center is our Strategic Alternative Learning Technique Center. This is a phenomenal, uh, nationally renowned program um, for students with learning disabilities. So they're gonna be getting executive functioning coaching, general counseling, peer tutoring, that one-on-one -on -one interaction that people have a hard time always getting at college. Um, so that is a great program um, if that applies to you. Even if it doesn't apply to you, um, it can still be a great program to get involved in. They're always looking for student volunteers to help out. Um, and it's one of the coolest things about the U of A. Our A Center is where we're going to send you um, to kind of figure out your major if you're one of those undecided students, it's kind of our advising hub. So if you want to do business, but you're not sure what type of business, let's sit you down with a representative from the business college. Let's have you talk to a professor, a current student even, to help you figure out what's the best pass, path for you. Our Thrive Center, our think tank, we have tutoring, we have a great career center on campus. We want to make sure that you are set up to succeed from the moment you step foot on campus. Um, and all of these resources are really visible. You're going to get a lot of emails about them as a freshman at the University of Arizona because we want you to take advantage of them. Um, our CAPS is our Counseling and Psychological Services, that in our campus health. Uh, are really easy, like five minute walking distance from everywhere on campus. Um, and great, you know, if you're having a hard time transitioning to college, if you have something, you know, that might not be working perfectly during your freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior year. So these are a lot of the great resources that I think set us apart. Um, in addition, we have a huge alumni network. It's, I believe there's over 300,000 active Wildcat alums out there. There are a lot of regional alumni groups, and this is one of those big perks of going to a big school is our graduates are everywhere. So if you're applying to a job, there's honestly a good chance that a University of Arizona um, alum is working at that company, might even be on that hiring committee. So beyond just, you know, the standard things you're going to get at a college, we have great job fairs, we have great resume building experiences, we have great career coaching, mock interviews, resume workshops, 
We also are really proud of that network and how many people are staying involved, you know, 30 years after they graduate, who can help someone kind of get going in their career of choice. Um, this brings us to the more fun part of the presentation, talking a little bit about campus life at the University of Arizona. So we are the Wildcats. Um, we, the Wildcat spirit is a big part of campus. So you can see campus is always kind of clad in red and blue. We have over 400 clubs and student organizations that you can join. And there's a incredibly wide variety um, of options there. So we have a handful of great cultural resource centers on campus. So if you're looking to kind of find your community when you get to the University of Arizona, it's really easy. They have a giant fair on like the second day you're on campus on our main campus mall. Um, beyond that, the clubs and organizations cover a bit of everything. Um, if you're looking to like kind of go that pre-med route, there's clubs for you. If you're looking to join an investing club as a finance major, we have that as well. Um, pretty much every interest is covered. After those, it just gets really random. We have improv groups, we have theater groups, we have people who like snowboarding, we have people who like skiing, we have intramural sports if you like playing soccer or flag football or whatever. Um, we really think that, you know, I think personally, even outside of my University of Arizona uh, affiliation, that it is a great idea to get involved outside of the classroom. Um, and we really want students to be set up for that. I think 92% students reported that they were engaged in a club or internship opportunity while on campus. Um, bear down. These are the words you might hear when we're talking about the University of Arizona. It is our most beloved tradition motto and rallying cry. So if uh, you're a graduate, there's our bear down gym in that picture. Um, someone's going to shout bear down to you. You shout go, you shout, go cats back. Um, the story is a really long one about one of our famous quarterbacks at the University of Arizona, and it's a little confusing, but the bear down spirit is definitely very real. Um, in addition, we have 17 Division I sports. You do need something to cheer for. Um, we are in the Pac-12, um, and even though USC and UCLA will be leaving us soon, um, we are a phenomenal program. Our Zona Zoo is one of the loudest and proudest fan sections in the NCAA, specifically when it comes to basketball. Um, men's and women's uh, basketball, we've been a one seed, I think like over five times within the last 12 years. So there's always something to root for there. Football, not as much. We're working on it. Um, we lost to USC this weekend, but um, outside of that, there are 15 other um, different sports that we're going to offer at the Division One level. Um, and if you, you know, are a sophomore or junior, um, or even some seniors can figure out a tryout, those could be great programs for you. There are those scholarship opportunities for sports as well. Um, additionally, in terms of that campus life theme, um, we do have a lot of great on-campus housing. We serve about over half of our, a little over half of our students are coming from outside the state of Arizona. So people need housing. We have some great dorms and they're always building more. Um, we did just have our largest um, freshman class ever, which is why it says housing fills fast. So don't wait to apply. Um, students who do live on campus their first year tend to have higher GPAs and higher four-year graduation rates, but you are not necessarily required to live on um, if you have a better option lined up. Um, what else do I have to say for housing? Oh, the meal plans are also really fun. Um, you're going to be getting a lot of diverse food options while you're on campus as well. Um, so you'll never be hungry. Uh, I have a whole nother slide about food in Tucson, so I'll wait. Um, we also have great off-campus housing. So say you're looking to get out of the dorms after your freshman year, um, be a little more independent. Um, Tucson, the cost of living is really nice compared to some of those big cities you might be looking at for universities. Um, so there are a lot of great resources there um, that I would definitely recommend checking out. Um, they've all been kind of pre-approved and vetted by the university. So those can be good options as well. Um, awesome. 
Just talking a little bit more about what's outside of campus. Um, we have Saguaro um, State Park. We have a lot to do outside of campus. Even though we are a desert town, it's not like we're in the middle of nowhere. Phoenix is about an hour and a half uh, drive for us, depending on how fast you're driving. Um, but otherwise, a lot of cool things come through Tucson. There's a lot to do nearby. Um, it is a pretty vibrant city, so you're never going to be bored. Um, also, it does help that, you know, depending on where you're coming from, I grew up in Chicago. It was freezing the entire time. Whenever I get to be on campus, I'm very excited. Um, it's an average annual high temperature of 83 degrees. Keep in mind that all of those dorms I mentioned are air conditioned, um, and we are about 10 degrees cooler than like Tempe or Phoenix, if you've or the Grand Canyon, if you've been there. Um, that is because we have these mountains nearby. This is a picture um, of us planting the U of A flag uh, right near Mount Lemon, um, which is only about like 20 to 30 minutes from campus. Um, we were the nation's best 23 miles of Mexican food, which may seem a little too specific for you. I'm like, who has the best 22 miles? I don't know. Um, but even beyond that, we are a um, UNESCO uh, gastronomical site, which means we have culturally significant food. Seriously, the food is very good. Um, it's one of my favorite parts about coming to campus. Um, also, the public transportation is really nice. So say you wanted to get off campus, hit up Trader Joe's, check out a farmer's market, check out our historic districts. Um, there is a lot to do. Um, even though freshmen are allowed to have their car on campus, you don't really need one. Um, the public transportation is pretty awesome. So um, how to apply. Um, I don't want to go over my time here so I can work through this quickly. Um, but um, how our application works, um, we primarily are working off of your self-reported coursework. So these are kind of our sweet 16 in terms of the classes that you're looking for. You are allowed to be, um, it doesn't have to be perfect basically with the 16. Um, you can be short one year in a category, um, but after that it gets pretty complicated. But um, we are looking for these core classes. Um, and we actually do have an assured admissions policy where if you complete all of these classes and are in the top quarter of your class or have a core 3.0 unweighted GPA, you are assured admission into the University of Arizona. So if there are any seniors watching this, you could be in, you just don't know it yet. Cool, what you don't need. Um, we are very flexible. We understand students come from a lot of different backgrounds and a lot of different circumstances. Um, we are test optional, as a lot of universities there are today, so we're pretty truly test optional too. If you feel excited about what you got on a test, feel free to send them our way, but if you didn't have the opportunity because of COVID or something, we totally understand that as well. Um, just to kind of backtrack the ways you do apply, you can apply on our Arizona website at arizona.edu slash apply. You can apply on the Common app or you can apply on the Coalition app if you're familiar with that. Um, so if you're doing the Common app, we're going to get any essays you write, any letters of recs, resume, all of that stuff. Um, but the core of our admissions decision is made looking at that transcript. So those essays, um, can be a great place to help provide additional information. I know on our Arizona specific website, it's we have like a prompt that's like, if there's anything weird that happened, you know, during the past four years, feel free to address it here. So we like to hear your side of the story. Um, but if you are doing well with those core competencies, um, you should be good to go. Um, cool. Um, a couple of things I just want to circle back um, in terms of like GPA requirements. We are um, above the national average and acceptance rate. However, some programs are a little more competitive than others. Um, so our average GPA um, of a matriculated student at the University of Arizona does end up being over a 3.6 on weighted GPA. Um, so people get in with, once again, that 3.0. Um, but certain programs like engineering, business are going to be looking for above a 3.5 usually, and our College of Nursing is looking for at least a 3.75 unweighted. 
Um, with any of those programs, if you're nervous about getting in, they will have you select a second major. So say I choose the College of Nursing, but I'm right on the fence. Um, it'll be like, hey, choose the second choice. I might choose something else, like something cool in our College of Pharmacy or Biomedical Engineering. Um, with all of those different majors, once again, the website is going to have those specific requirements laid out for you. Um, so if you have any questions, definitely check out those, those major specific requirements. Cool. Um, scholarships. So this is specifically geared towards out-of-state residents, um, but that's, that's a territory I usually work with. But nine out of 10 Wildcats usually do receive financial aid. We are pretty friendly when it comes to out-of-state money. I believe we were a Princeton Review Best Value College. Um, last year, and I think that is reflective of the chart that you're about to see. Keep in mind, all of this information is also on the website, and there is going to be that recording. So if you can't scan this chart, I'll make sure I talk for a bit during this. But once again, we're looking at that core GPA as calculated um, from those sweet 16 classes. Um, so a 4.0 core GPA in terms of merit aid, um, scholarship money um, is going to get you around $32,000 per academic year at the University of Arizona. You can kind of go down the chart and see where you fit, um, but keep in mind that your listed GPA might look a little different than what we come up with because we are looking at those core academic course requirements. So there are some situations where a high school student's transcript will say like, 3.76, but that's including a class that we don't necessarily count. So ours comes out to like a 3.72. So these awards, there these are the specific out-of-state ones. Um, they're based on a core unweighted GPA through your sixth semester in school. Once you're at the University of Arizona, they are renewable for all four years. Um, and it's pretty straightforward to keep them. Um, and yeah, if you ever have any specific questions about this, all the terms and conditions are laid out on our financial aid website. Um, and another really cool tool is our financial aid calculator. So if you just Google University of Arizona financial aid calculator, it will walk you through what your tuition could look like. Another cool place for scholarships, just because I am coming up on my 30 minutes, um, is our scholarship universe. Um, these are a lot of great, you know, specific scholarships for students. So, for example, if you like have really good eyesight, you can look in. There's a law office that does a first generation scholarship. There might be major specific ones. There might be ones that are for specific populations from specific regions. Um, it really just depends. So once you are admitted to the university, you can go through here and check out some of those more specific opportunities beyond that automatic Arizona tuition award. All right, um, just wrapping up a couple other things. So if I gave this presentation and you're like, wow, I definitely have great grades. Um, I think I'm definitely going to get in. I want more of a challenge. You might be perfect for our W.A. Frankie Honors College. There are, I want to say, 3,500 total students at the university, just so a little under 1,000 per academic year um, in our Honors College. Um, it's one of our newest buildings on campus, the Honors Village. It has housing. It has a dining hall. Um, some of the perks of the program are you are going to get access to those honors faculty courses, smaller class sizes, specific professional development opportunities. Um, but in terms of applying to it, um, it is a supplemental application. So after you get into the U of A, you would apply to the Frankie Honors College um, with a link you'll receive after applying. Um, the main things that you need for this, so keep in mind these were optional for the main application, is for the Honors College, you do need a personal statement, a recommendation, and an activities resume. If you are a national merit semifinalist um, or higher, you will be automatically admitted into this program. Um, you just need to send in that certificate to me or someone else at the University of Arizona, um, and you should be good to go. Um, keep in mind that the average GPA, I believe, for the last full year we have this for 
um, for someone who got into this program was a 3.93 unweighted GPA. So it's definitely pretty competitive. Additionally, as it says at the bottom, those test scores are not considered for fall 2023 honors admission. Um, we'd love to have you on campus. Once again, I do like that we are a pretty accessible campus to get to, and they definitely do put on some great tours. In July, it's going to be a little hotter because it is Arizona, um, so try and go in the winter if you can. Um, but those are great, um, and you just have to go to arizona.edu slash admissions slash visit to set up your tour. Um, if you can't make the journey, that's totally okay. Um, we have a lot of great virtual tours, um, so you can pretty much like pick up a little person and walk them all the way around campus um, to get a feel. You can also check out some of our different dorms if you wanted to get a feel for that as well. Um, this QR code did not work. I checked before this, um, so don't use the QR code. Um, there were some technical difficulties with it, um, but I am Jack Josellis. I am the SoCal Regional Recruiter for the University of Arizona. Um, I'll also make sure that Bridget sends out my information if anyone has any questions, um, but thank you so much for listening, everyone, um, and let's get to the Q&A section. Yep. Thank you so much, Jack, for taking time out of your schedule. Uh, for those of you who aren't super familiar with the admissions world, the fall is no, the fall is the time for admissions, right? So the fact that we have um, Jack from University of Arizona and a list of other colleges that are taking time to speak with us, I, we just really appreciate it. So I'm going to let you know before I pause the recording for everyone who's listening, we do have more sessions coming up. Uh, Johns Hopkins University will be presenting uh, Carnegie Mellon, Sarah Lawrence, and Mullenberg College. So we've got a really interesting slate of colleges, uh, a diverse group of schools that will be speaking to our families uh, this fall. So I will pause the recording. Thank you for joining us, and we will do some Q&A.